to Galatians chapter 6. We're going to read verses 7 through 9. This is going to be our scripture lesson for this morning. Our text is going to come from somewhere else. Galatians chapter 6, we're going to read verses 7 through 9. Our text is going to come from somewhere else. The title of today's message is, If You Do Right, Right Will Follow You. Okay. If You Do Right, Right Will Follow You. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reap what he sows. Verse 8 says, Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Verse 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Y'all, Sir Isaac Newton years ago came up with a theory of motion in physics. And it states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Or for every action, there is a reaction. <clears throat> Meaning, when you set some in motion and it comes in contact with something else, there's always a reaction to it. Now, y'all, this theory doesn't just apply to physics, but it also applies to our everyday life. The word says that whatever you sow or whatever you put out there, y'all, there's eventually going to be a reaction to it in the heavenly realm. Way before Sir Isaac Newton came up with his theory of motion, y'all, God created the principle of reaping what you sow, meaning whatever deeds you do, whether good or bad, eventually there's going to be a reaction to it in the heavenly realm. Now, y'all, some people call it karma when we reap what we sow, and some people say it's the universe uh, repaying you for what you did. But, y'all, I tell you that God is the orchestrator and the creator of, of reaping what you sow. Y'all, there's no such thing as karma. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, y'all, it's God repaying you for what you did whether good or bad. Amen. Y'all, the principle of, of reaping what you sow is the law of life, and it pertains to everybody, whether you're saved or if you're not saved. And the principle of reaping what you sow, y'all, is irrevocable, meaning it can't be changed, it can't be nullified, and it can't be reversed. If you sow it, y'all, or, or if you do it, you're going to reap it. Amen. Amen. Meaning if you do good or if you do bad, that's what's coming back to you. Amen. Amen. Let me show you in scripture how the Israelites develop a pattern of evil or a pattern of sin and how God reacted to their sin. And it got to the point where the Israelites were, every time they did evil, it seemed like they got a response from God. Turn in your Bibles uh, to Judges chapter 2. We're going to read verses 11 through 15. Judges chapter 2. We're going to read verses 11 through 15. Are you there? Judges chapter 2, we're going to read verses 11 through 15. Amen. Verse 11 says, Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. They worshiped the Lord, they, they forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshiped various gods of the people around them. They aroused the Lord's anger because they forsook him and served the Baals and the Ashes. Hold up right there, y'all. In the scripture I just read, we found out that the Israelites acted in sin, or in the Israelites, y'all, in the Israelites' case, y'all, they developed a pattern of sin. A sin that started as soon as they left out of Egypt. And now they're at the point, y'all, to where they're worshiping other gods. Amen. 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 And verse 14 says, In his anger against Israel, the Lord gave them into the hands of raiders who plundered them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies all around whom they were no longer able to resist. Whenever Israel went out to fight, the hand of the Lord was against them to defeat them. Just as he had sworn to them, they were in great distress. Y'all, because the Israelites developed a pattern of sin, the Lord eventually reacts to their sin. And it got to the point, y'all, where every time the Israelites acted in sin, y'all, it seemed like the Lord reacted to their sin. Y'all, much the same as Sir Isaac Newton's theory of motion, which states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. 
It seemed like because the Israelites developed a pattern of sin, it prompted the Lord to react to their sin. And this wasn't just a one-time occasion, occasion y'all. It happened over and over again in the Bible. There's a pattern going on here. The Israelites sin, the Lord reacts to their sin. The Israelites sin, the Lord reacts to their sin. And the same thing happens to us. Amen. I'm going to show you this morning. Turn over to Judges chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 7 and 8 for you. Judges chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 7 and 8 for you. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Verse 7 says, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Now, mind you, y'all, this is the second scripture that I read where the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. The scripture goes on to say, they forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherahs. Verse 8 says, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel. So they sold them in the hands of Cushan, Rishadim, king of Aram, Naharim, to whom the Israelites were subject to for eight years. Again, we see that the Israelites acted in sin and the Lord reacted to their sin. Let's look at another group of scripture. Move down to Judges chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Judges chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Verse 12 says, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. This is the third scripture I read, y'all, where the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. The scripture goes on to say, and because they did this evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Moab, power over Israel. Getting the Ammonites and the Malachites to join him, Eglon came and attacked Israel, and they took possession of the city of Saul. The Israelites were subject to, king, to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years. Are you starting to see the pattern here, y'all? Again, the Israelites sin, and again, the Lord reacts to their sin. Let's look at one more scripture because I want you to really get this, y'all. Move down to Judges chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Judges chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Verse 1 says, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. These people just won't do right, y'all. Now the Ehud were dead. Verse 2 says, so the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who lived in Hazor. So Sarah, the commander of his army, was based in Arosa, Gagoyim, because he had 900 chariots fitted for iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. They cried out to the Lord for help. Y'all, in every scripture that I read to you, we see an action by the Israelites and we see a reaction by the Lord to the Israelites' sin. Now, y'all, let me say this before I go any further. God is not just sitting in heaven waiting on you to sin. That's not what God is doing. God is a God of grace, and he is a God of mercy. But when we develop a pattern of sin, God's going to deal with it. Amen? Just like he dealt with the Israelites' uh, sin. One thing I can say about the Israelites, y'all, I got to give them some credit. Every time they got out of the will of God, y'all, and God will punish them, they knew who to cry out to. Right. They would never cry out to those other gods they were serving. They knew to cry out to the Lord. Amen. Amen. One thing about the Israelites, y'all, they knew where the help came from. Amen. The Lord. Amen. Amen. And we got to know where our help comes from. Amen. It comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Y'all, every time the Israelites did wrong, wrong followed them. <laughs> y'all, a friend of mine used to say to me, he used to say, Petty, if you do right, Right? We'll follow you. And that's ironic, y'all, because during that time period in my life and his life, neither one of us had any intentions on doing what was right. <laughs> that's ironic that he would say that. But he would say, Patty, if you do right, right will follow you. And that's true, y'all. But if you do wrong, wrong will also follow you. Amen. And the wrong that you do, it's going to catch up to you 100% of the time. Amen. The wrong that you do is going to eventually catch up with you. And, y'all, it's not karma, and it's not the devil bearing down on you. Y'all, a lot of times, we get the devil too much credit. Amen? But it's God punishing you for the wrong that you did, just like he did the Israelites. Amen? The Bible says for those he loves or for those God loves, he chastises. Right? He chastises, y'all. Every action, y'all, has a reaction. Every time the Israelites acted in sin, the Lord reacted. And the same thing goes for us, y'all. Whatever you sow, that you, you shall also reap. Amen. 
whatever you sow, y'all, you're eventually going to reap it. Amen. Amen. Here's the thing, y'all. A lot of times when we get out of the will of God, y'all, we get caught up in sin, we think we got away with it. Because at first, nothing, nothing happens. Amen. We'll sin, and because nothing happens in the short term, we think we got away scot-free. As a matter of fact, y'all, because we think we got away with it, we'll sometimes commit the same sin over and over again. But I submit to you, y'all, that sin never goes unpunished. Amen. If you sow it, you're going to reap it. Amen. Sometimes it might take weeks. Sometimes it might take months. Sometimes it might even take years. But if you put it out there, it's coming back to you. Amen. 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 Just like did the same thing happen to the Israelites, y'all. Y'all, in the Old Testament, when somebody sinned, it seemed like God punished them right away. Think about Adam and Eve for a minute. When Adam and Eve bit off that fruit, it seemed like God showed them right away and started handing out punishment, didn't he? Seems like he, what if God did us like that? What if as soon as we did something wrong, God cracked the whip on our back? Amen. I bet a lot of people would think second about doing something wrong if their punishment would come swift. Amen. Every time the Israelites got away from God, y'all, something bad would eventually happen to them. When we get away from the Lord, y'all, or stop doing things God's way, we lose our protection from the enemy. Amen. God is our protection. Amen. And when we lose our protection, y'all, we give the enemy a foothold to take charge over our lives. Mm -hmm. And y'all, we don't want the enemy to take charge over our lives, do we? We don't, want, we don't want the enemy to take charge over our lives because the enemy's plan for your life is a lot different than God's plan for your life. God's plan for your life is to prosper you and not to harm you. God's plan for your life is to give you hope yes. and to yes. give you a future. Amen. But the enemy's plan for your life is to literally destroy you. Mm. Amen. 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 So we don't want the enemy to have charge over our lives, do we? Right. Y'all, Jesus said in John 10, 10, that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and to what? Destroy. And destroy. So if we get an enemy charge over our life, what's going to happen to us? We're going to be destroyed. Amen. 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 The Lord is our protector, y'all. And unrepentant sin, it separates us from our protector. Sin separates us from God, y'all. It does not separate you from the love of God, but it does separate you from God. And when you're separated from God, you're separated from your protection. Amen. Y'all, sometimes the reason why all hell has broken loose in our life is we're not under God's protection because of unrepentant sin in our lives. Amen. Right. Amen. And God has given Satan the authority to wreak havoc in our lives. Amen. Amen. Even though sin allows Satan a pathway into our lives, y'all, there's an easy fix for this. All we got to do is repent That's right. from what we did wrong. Amen. 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 All we got to do is repent from what we're doing wrong. What does it mean to repent, y'all? Does it mean to just tell God you're sorry for what you did? That's part of it, y'all, but that's not all of it. True repentance is not only just feel sorry for what you did, but true repentance means to turn away from what you did wrong right. or to stop sinning. Right. Amen. 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 Y'all, the concept of reaping what you sow is akin to the boomerang effect. A boomerang, those of you that have thrown a boomerang will know if you throw a boomerang out, it goes out and it comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. With a God's person of reaping what you sow, it works the same way. Mm -hmm. Whatever you put out there, y'all, whether good or bad, it's coming back to you. Right. The only thing about a boomerang, y'all, those that have thrown a boomerang, you'll know that that boomerang don't come back to you 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. But God's principle of reaping what you sow is 100% guaranteed. Right. Amen. 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 If you put it out there, it's coming back. Proverbs 11.27 says, He who diligently seeks good seeks favor, but he who searches out the evil, it will come to him. The second part of Proverbs 12.14 says, The deeds of a man's hands will return to him. Y'all, if you do right, 
right will follow you. Amen. On, the, on the contrary, if you do wrong, wrong will also follow you. And eventually the wrong that you do is going to catch up to you. 100% of the time, y'all. Some people think they can do wrong, y'all, and things are still going to go well for them. God's principle, reaping what you sow, it don't work like that, y'all. Right. Whatever you plant, that's what's coming up. Amen. Amen. Y'all, you don't plant weeds and expect for an orange tree to come up, do you? Whatever you plant or sow, that you shall also reap. Amen. You don't believe me? Ask brother folks and elder folks. They got a they got a garden in their backyard, y'all. Ask them if have they ever planted cucumbers and corn came up in the place where they planted. Them. Ask them if they ever planted cabbage and tomatoes came up in the place where they planted. Them. Whatever they put in the ground, y'all, that's what's coming up. Amen. 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 Whatever you sow, y'all, that you shall also reap. Now, y'all, God will forgive you of your of the sin that you repent for. But you still have to live with the consequences Amen. of that sin. God will forgive you of the sin, right. but you still have to pay the consequences. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense, y'all? Y'all, the Bible is filled with stories of people that, that reap what they sow. Some reap for the good, and some reap for the bad. I'm reminded of the story of the widow of Zarephath in the Bible. This lady, y'all, was on the verge of starvation. She only had enough food for her and her son to eat one last meal, and then she was going to die. But she took some of that last meal that she had, and she sold it into the man of God. Amen. And because she sold a portion of her last meal into the man of God, the Bible said that, little, that last little flour in that meal that she had, the Bible said that it never ran out. Amen. The Bible said that there was enough food for her, her family, not just her son, but her family and Elijah did eat every single day because she took something out of the little that she had and she sold it. Amen. If you sow it, y'all, you're going to reap it, whether good or bad. Amen. On the other hand, y'all, I'm reminded of the story of Jezebel in the Bible. This lady tried to lead a whole nation away from people by introducing them to her false god, Baal. But eventually, Jezebel paid the price for the seed that she sowed. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that Jezebel was eventually pushed out of a high window, trampled by a horse, and dogs ate her body. Mm -hmm. This lady lived a horrible life, and she died a horrible death. Mm -hmm. She reaped what she sowed. That's right. Amen. Amen. Y'all, I'm going to say it one more time. Whatever you sow or whatever you put out there, that you shall also reap. I'm also reminded of the Israelites in the Bible when they left Egypt and they were on their way to the promised land. The Israelites kept saying, we're going to die in this wilderness. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened to them. Because they sowed the seed of death by saying, by continuously saying, we're going to die in this wilderness, the Lord brought it to pass. Amen. They died in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to the Israelites, because you've been saying that you're going to die in this wilderness, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. Hey, y'all, if we sow it, we're going to reap it. Now, let's talk about sowing money. Everybody love money, right? You can go ahead and say it. I know y'all love money. <laughs> Everybody love money, right? Well, y'all, I had this friend named Ray, and Ray is gone on to be with the Lord now, but Ray would always give to the homeless. And the thing about Ray was, Ray would never get a homeless like some spare change or a dollar or two dollars. Ray would always get them five dollars or ten dollars or, or twenty dollars. And I believe y'all, if Ray had a hundred dollars to give, I believe Ray would give them that hundred dollars. So one day, I used to ride in the truck with Ray. And one, so one day I asked Ray, I said, why do you give the homeless people so much money? Because most people only give them spare change or a dollar or two. And Ray said to me, he said, the reason why I give them so much money is I like to see the expression on their face when I give them the money. And he said, and the more money I give them, the bigger their expression would be. Amen. 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 It made Ray feel good, y'all, to sow into somebody else. Amen. Amen. I really believe Ray enjoyed giving that money more than those people enjoyed receiving it. If only everybody could be like Ray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Y'all, society has taught us self-preservation. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It has taught us to get yours. Mm -hmm. 
and don't worry about nobody else. But y'all, that theory runs contrary to the word of God. The word of God says, if you give, it shall be given back to you. Amen. We have to ask ourselves a question, y'all. Am I a giver or am I a taker? We have to really look at ourselves and ask ourselves a question. Am I a giver or am I a taker? Because if you are a taker, meaning you always want somebody to give unto you, then that concept, it runs contrary to the word of God, and it might be the reason why you can't seem to get ahead no matter how much you plot and scheme. Amen. I'm just saying, y'all. I'm just saying, y'all. My daddy, y'all, God bless his soul, y'all, would always keep some cash on him. Always. He would always, you, you would never ever catch him without any cash on him. Because he never knew when he was going to run into somebody that needed a helping hand. And he knew if he didn't have any cash on him, he was going to miss an opportunity to help somebody in need. Amen. Amen. Y'all, uh, now let me ask you a question. How many times have you been out on the street and you saw somebody in need and you wanted to help them, but you couldn't because you didn't have any cash on you? Y'all, I've been in that situation a lot of times. But I vow, and I, I usually don't keep any cash on me either, but I vow to start keeping some cash on me so I have something to give to people in need. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, God's principle of reaping what you sow, y'all, money works the same as sin. You've got to reap what you sow. Amen? Amen. Amen. And God's going to uh, give y'all, God's give us plenty of opportunities to give. Don't know, I don't want nobody to say that they don't have no cause, nobody to give to. God gives us plenty of opportunities to give. Amen. Y'all, take for instance, when you go out to eat. When you go out to eat, y'all, that, that's opportunity to give even in that. Y'all, I've seen people go out to a restaurant and work the waitress to death and get up on the table and leave the waitress a $2 tip. That's not right, y'all. That's not right, y'all. Right, if, 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 if that person has been a blessing to you, then you should be a blessing to them. Amen. 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 Now, some people say, well, I don't, I don't have enough money to give a tip all the time. Then that's a good indication that you probably shouldn't be eating out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. At least at a restaurant where they normally require tips. Amen. You probably shouldn't be eating out if you don't have enough money to leave a tip. Y'all, it's okay to eat at home. Amen. 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 Eating, at, eating at home, you can eat at home. Eating out is not a, a necessity. It's a luxury. Amen. Amen. Y'all, in closing, okay. for every one of our actions, y'all, there is a reaction in the heavenly realm, whether good or bad. If you sow sin, then you're going to reap the punishment that comes from sin. And sin eventually leads to destruction and a one-way trip to hell. So don't say I didn't warn you. Amen. When you get before the Lord, don't say Mr. Petty didn't warn you. Amen. Amen. Sin leads to destruction and a one-way trip to hell. Amen. On the other hand, y'all, if you sow something good, your time, your talent, your money, you're going to reap a good harvest Amen. based on what you sow. Amen. Amen. Y'all, the principle of reaping what you sow is a principle that applies to every aspect of our lives, y'all. What you do daily is a seed that you're sowing. Yeah. Your actions, your deeds, your choices, your words, your money are all seeds that you're sowing on a daily basis. So we want to sow good seed. Amen. 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 Because we want a good harvest. Right. Amen. A harvest that includes eternal life. Amen. 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 Come on, stand to your feet. Amen.